I am Liffy and welcome to another planty video. Today it is time for another in the Plants 101 uh, series and today we are looking at gutation. So I'm going to try and keep this one short and sweet today but every once in a while I go onto Facebook or Instagram or whatever and see posts about people asking why there are drops of water on their leaves. So cut to picture here um, and why you have these tiny little drops mostly in the mornings at the edge of your plants. Um, it's not due, it's caused by gutation, so I thought that's a little bit of the science behind what causes it. So that's basically what we are here for today. So you'll notice that some mornings you'll go and look at your plants and there'll be tiny, tiny little bits of water at the very end of the leaves. So like on this guy, you'll see them drips over here or along the margins, or if you live in a high humidity environment, and that is caused by gutation. It's not condensation from the atmosphere, it's actually coming from inside the plant. But how does it happen? Basically, water is being released from inside of the plant, but it's got nothing to do with transpiration. <gasps> Misty. Sorry, distracted by the cat. So it's got nothing to do with transpiration, which basically is involved in the cooling and feeding of a plant, so in photosynthesis, gutation, nothing to do with that. So your basic plant physics are you have your xylem and your phloem. Yes, exactly, Misty. So xylem transports water and nutrients up from the roots and phloem, <laughs> phloem transports um, food made by photosynthesis in the leaves down to the roots and to the stem, basically. That's the terrible description of basically what xylem and phloem do. So I am xylem, I am phloem. There's gonna be a lot of cuts today just because I'm very distracted by the very cute cat. You can't see her, but she's, she's here. The problem that xylem has is basically it has to compete with gravity. So because it's trying to push stuff up, gravity is basically saying, nah, brah, I'm pushing stuff down again. And during the day when the stomata, so if you haven't looked at my humidity video, you can go back and Watch that if that helps. And the stomata, which open and close during the day and help with transpiration, help to pull water through the xylem of the plant. Basically, they form like a little straw. I would do a demonstration, but I have no straws because we're a straw-free household, aren't we, Misty? So at night, transpiration slows because your stomata go from being open to being closed. And this slows down the rate of evaporation of water. But xylem still needs to transport water and minerals throughout the plant. Otherwise, the plant's just going to like wilt and die because you can't just stop feeding at night time. So this is where a handy little thing called a high Hydrothode comes in. So the problem is at night time your stomata which during the day are open they close. This means that water can't actually move up through the xylem anymore um, through transpiration but the plants have actually devised a way to get around this. There are specific cells in the roots that allow minerals to build up and this causes pressure. So I don't think a hair what can I use to show you? I can use some paint. <laughs> so imagine that the bottom of this tube of paint is the roots and the top is the leaf. It's a very accurate diagram. So your minerals build up in the roots, which slowly builds up pressure by drawing water in. And as more water comes in, so imagine this is filling up with water, AKA paint, filling, 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 and that helps to actually create pressure and push water up. I wish I was doing this with toothpaste. So there you go. Now I have paint coming out the top of my tube because there's water built pressure, AKA the pushing, building up at the bottom. The problem with this is, so the, the plant is now getting the water that it needs, it's being pushed up because of this pressure, but leaves can only take in so much water, otherwise we all know that that's a problem. And that's where the hydrothode comes in. So the hydrothode is essentially a stomata, it's called a water stomata, but it doesn't open and close, it remains constantly open. And this basically allows excess water to be pushed out of the plant, and those are the drops that you're seeing at the margins and the tips of the leaves. It's basically just kind of like a safety mechanism to be like, there's too much water, there's too much pressure, get it out of me, and that's kind of what it is. So really this is a pretty accurate analogy. The end of this tube of paint is always open, as the pressure at the bottom increases, paint comes out the top. Ta-da! So imagine the top here is a hydrothode always open, allowing water paint to come out. So the hydrothode performs no other function other than allowing this water to be released during gutation. It's not involved in gaseous exchange, it's not involved in photosynthesis. Um, actually the edge of around the hydrothode is actually surrounded by like non-specialized cells that don't contain chloroplasts or anything. Literally it's just there in the epidermal surface of the plant to let water out during gutation so that the plant can remain happy at night or in high humidity environments. So is gutation a problem, I hear you ask? Not really, my friends. It's a natural process that the plants do, so it's absolutely fine. You're gonna have a problem though. Oh, sorry, Misty, I touched her foot. That was not ideal. You're gonna have a problem though if you have a high mineral content in your soil. So that will mean that as the water is being released through gutation at the hydrothodes at the tips and the margins, and you'll probably see this on your plants, um, 
the minerals will build up once the water evaporates and you will get browning and burn. Basically it burns the tips. Um, I did have a plant that I had this on but I cut the leaf off and I threw it away. I was too ashamed to look at it. Um, you can also get fungal infection because the hydrothodes are always open. It basically increases your risk of fungal infection in high humidity environments. So that's why you also need to keep a check on your airflow and things like that. So basically just make sure that your plants aren't suffocating and you'll be absolutely happy. And maybe if you are noticing that leaf burn um, after guttation happens, just maybe drop the fertilizing a little bit and you should be good. So that's basically guttation in a nutshell. It's basically your plants just squeezing water, excess water out at night or in high humidity environments so that they can still keep nutrients and stuff going around the plant when the stomata are closed and transpiration isn't happening. Um, it's basically just keeping them alive <laughs> in a nutshell. So the next time you see those little drops of water at the end of your leaves, you can think, mm, yes, the hydrothode. What a fantastic thing. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that video and maybe learned a little something too. Um, I thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel and fancy subscribing, the link will pop up somewhere here. Um, but thank you so much and I hope you're all well and perhaps fancy watching some more videos. I wouldn't say no, but I will see you next time for another planty video. Bye guys. Also, I'm trying to get the studio set up to work because we're still in lockdown and I can't film in my normal spot, but I think this is maybe working. I think we could have possibly cracked it. So. <laughs> Bye from Misty on a very dirty studio floor. I won't show you guys the rest of this room, it's tragic. But we'll see you guys next time.